All right, I think we might be live, maybe. So let's go ahead and uh, start chatting. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Laura Helseth. I am a copy editor and will be moderating this panel between these two lovely ladies um, who are Coastal Magic authors. So why don't we start with introductions? We'll start with Casey since you're on the top of my screen here. I'll just kind of go back and forth. You want to introduce yourself to everyone and tell us about your books? All right. Well, I'm uh, Casey Byrne. Uh, I write gay romance in uh, contemporary sci-fi and paranormal flavors. And um, yeah, that's about it. I mean, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> What's your latest and what's upcoming? Oh my goodness. Oh, that, what, a, what a terrible question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, honestly, like um, I had, have had a very, it's not a full on hiatus from writing, but it's been pretty close since, since the pandemic started. So, um, cause the day job ramped up like crazy. And then my husband had a severe health issue. Mm -hmm. So I've just started getting back into things. <laughs> My last release was probably um, the short, the expanded short story I did for Coastal Magic last year. <laughs> there was um, one of the bookish bits and bites. I forget which one of these is last year's. Oh, this, this one. I don't know. Anyway, um, I expanded that uh, one of the stories and sent put that out. Um, and then coming up is uh, a book called West on Granger, which I've been trying to write for a very long time. <laughs> I'm hoping to get it finished next this month. So that's that's me. But thank you for the question. <laughs> you want to introduce yourself, Miss Cerisa? Did I say your name right? Cerisa. Cerisa. That's it. Okay. Oh, Perfect. anything close I answer to. So it, that was good. That was a good first try. So no problem at all. I know I probably should put that like on my website or in my handles or something. Um, but hi, everybody. I'm Cerisia Glass. I write uh, contemporary romance, paranormal romance, and urban fantasy. Uh, my uh, last release was The Love Con, which is a contemporary romance set around a, a cosplay reality show. And uh, right now, I'm currently working on uh, an indie uh, novella that was in a Christmas at Canem Castle anthology a couple of years ago. And it's a uh, set in my Shadow Chasers uh, urban fantasy universe. So hopefully that'll be out before Coastal Magic. Excellent, excellent. Um, it sounds like you have a guest with you. You want to show off your little fur baby? <laughs> yeah, I, I have four fur babies and they <laughs> just heard my husband's truck pull into the driveway. So they're going nuts. Um, right next to me is, is my senior dog. He's a 15 year old or 16 year old um, poodle, standard poodle. So he, he's blind. So he was using his barking to echolocate where I was. <laughs> Basically, we'll just say that. Um, so now he's quiet because he's right next to me. So, and the other two are Connie Corso Pitbull mixes. So, but they're little tiny kiddos who are very adorable oh. until somebody <laughs> knocks on the door. Do they have big jowls? I just want to. Very, yes, uh, especially the new one is a puppy. So uh, she has chewed through everything. Oh I mean, goodness. literally everything. Um, so we've, we've had to replace floors, uh, a, a, a little, the little couch thingy that you put at the foot of the bed that had to get replaced. Uh, her dog beds had to get replaced. Rakes, it doesn't matter. Jugs, shoes, of course, shoes, belts. Uh, the vacuum cleaner, <laughs> you know, what most dogs will be afraid of, she doesn't care as long as it's tasty. And her definition of tasty is very loose. So yes, but my husband's home now. So hopefully he will corral them somewhere else. Elsewhere. <laughs> Sorry, I get distracted by all things furry um, and not furry too, let's be honest. I'm an animal person. So anyway, tonight's topic, we are talking all things sweet. Um, I don't know if you guys brought anything, but I brought a snack. I love, love cookie cake. <laughs> so I grabbed some cookie cake so I can snack on something sweet. Uh, did either of you bring anything for our little chat tonight? I did. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm trying to be good. Um, I'm on a low carb diet, so sugar is yeah. So I can I can show you what I've been snacking on, but I am currently not snacking because I have a certain time of in my writing that I eat it if I've done good. So and it's not time yet. So I've got another hour before I can can snack on it. I admire snacks? that. Yes, but I don't know if you can see the picture. No, you can't because it's really dark. But there are uh, there's uh, Atkins has a, a like a you know those turtles the chocolate turtles. So they've got a keto version of that, uh, which is very good. And I tried to only eat one a day, uh, and it's a struggle sometimes. To only eat the one. What you got, Casey? Uh, well, I just want to say I admire that because I should be doing low carb, but right now I'm not because um, I just a, a week and a half ago, I was back home in, in Toronto and uh, well, they say home. I mean, I don't live there anymore, but I'm from there. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of things, uh, chocolate bars, for instance, in, in Canada that you can't get here. Um, so I have a selection of Cadbury's chocolate bars mm. that you can't get down here. So there's crispy crunch which is like um a crunchy sort of peanut buttery thing uh crunchy which is sponge toffee chocolate covered sponge toffee wouldn't wonder bar which is like peanut butter and rice krispies and caramel and chocolate delightful um and then i also have this this is not a cadbury one uh, by the way cadbury chocolate is much better in canada british cadbury's is the best <laughs> Canadian and then here it does taste different um this one here it's called Big Turk it's chocolate covered well they say it's Turkish delight but if anybody's had Turkish delight this is this is to real Turkish delight what Taco Bell is to Mexican food right like it's not <laughs> but I still love it it's basically it's purple jelly covered in chocolate I don't know I love it so that's what I that's what I have I could have brought baked goods too but I decided to refrain from doing that. <laughs> None of those sound bad, I'll be honest. <laughs> not not a single one of them sounds like something that I would not like. Um, we've been getting some comments that readers are saying that they have loved Last Bastion and the Love Con. So just to let you know. Um, and Delorean says the turtle, turtle chocolates are delightful. Um, also agree, hard agree with that. So uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. <laughs> it's been a long week. Um, so in addition to sweet sweets, we can talk about some sweet romance too. So what's in your stories that makes a romance sweet for you, both eat in your writing and when you're reading? I'll let you guys chat back and forth. I don't know. I think slow burn romances are kind of sweet or are sweet. Um, because it, it doesn't mean uh, necessarily closed door for, to me. It's more uh, the relationship and how it unfolds and develops and how their feelings for each other grow and how they demonstrate those. So, I mean, even in something that uh, could be labeled erotic romance, there are sweet moments uh, between the, the, uh, the couple or couple or multiple, um, however many there are. So I just think that, um, that that play of emotion and the acts that they do to kind of show that they care or um, things that they do unaware that demonstrate how they care. I think it's just those moments just make you just clutch up inside. It's like, oh, that is so sweet. Yeah, I, I would I would absolutely 100% agree that little that little feeling in the pit of your stomach, you know, that little flutter that you get when they do something, you know, nice for each other or demonstrate how much they care. I 100% agree. You know, for me, it's not, it's also not, it doesn't have to do with the, the heat level, whether it's sweet or not. You know, I, I think you have certain themes and topics that I, I would, I would never say never, but in general, like, you know, things with like serial killers or sexual violence or what have you, like none of that's going to be sweet, you know, but uh, even if they do have, you know, tender moments or whatever, I, I feel for the most part, those aren't going to be sweet. <laughs> but, um, you know, just about anything else, I think has the, the potential to be, to be sweet, because it's more about the emotion, not the, not the, think, the heat level. 
I think for me, sweet are the small moments, like not necessarily the green gestures. I think it's more in the the day to day, you know, she makes his coffee the way he likes it, or he makes, you know, his husband's pancakes for breakfast or you know the little the little moments I think those are the really sweet ones for me you know not 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 that grand gestures aren't sweet you know obviously that can be sweet too I think it it definitely depends on the person receiving the gestures whether or not they consider it sweet but so to me the small moments are the sweet ones Um, and I love those and you can get those and I agree with you, Casey, in almost (laughs) every romance. (laughs) Um, Oh, also, DeLorean would like a list of the chocolates that we need to import from Canada. (laughs) So if you could get working on that list. I will, 100%. (laughs) I I would appreciate it, personally. Um, So what, is there a, a repeat sweet thing that your couples do in your books like do you have a a favorite sweet or a favorite trope um that you see kind of creeping up in in your books or that you always gravitate to when you read i I must admit i don't tend to gravitate towards stories that sound sweet (laughs) I, I happen upon them by accident and I like them, but I don't <laughs> to seek them out. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> so I don't really have any any criteria on that on that respect. You know, um, I do like uh, when I'm writing, I do like, you know, everyday things, you know, where they're doing normal people stuff so for me that's where sweet moments come in when I'm writing. But yeah, I don't I don't really have a lot of criteria for I I, I have we, we talked, we mentioned briefly uh, uh, in our pre-conversation about uh, recommendations. So like, I, I certainly have ones that I read and liked, you know, but I don't generally seek them out. No, I, I do agree with Casey on that. Um, I, I don't tend to pick it up because it says it's sweet or is described as sweet. Um, I, again, I just go by kind of, you know, if it's a category that says it's sweet. I don't usually uh, go towards those, but if it's, uh, you know, a contemporary that has sweet moments in it or, you know, ends up kind of being like that, then, you know, it's kind of a, a, I discover it has sweet moments versus I'm reading a sweet Mm -hmm. romance, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. I got to admit, like even the term sweet, I have just sort of really bad knee jerk uh, reaction thinking just uh, automatically of Sweet Valley High. I just, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> That's not where I thought you were going with that. that. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Like it just kind of, you know, I, I, that's my sort of like my, my first thought, just a split second. And I'm just like, no, that's not what we're, we're doing here. So. <laughs> I'll admit when I, think of sweet romance I think it it kind of has gotten conflated with what people consider closed door romance they call that sweet romance and that implies that things with open door love scenes on the page can't be sweet and so I think that at least for me is why I don't necessarily gravitate toward books that call themselves sweet because I feel like they're judging books that have on-page love scenes. And that's what, you know, my own hang up, I'm sure, but. <laughs> no, me, no, but I, that, I mean, I would rather them conflate with sweet than, you know, the, the ter- clean, which I don't I would like at all for, yes. you know. Yes. That, that is definitely a judgmental term. Um, so, you know, sweet, I'm a little bit, like I, I do believe that people are conflating it, you know, with no, no sex on page. But uh, it's it to me is a little bit less judgmental than calling it clean, you know. True, very true. true. I agree because there's, I mean, I don't want to say there's nothing dirty about sex because sex is inherently dirty, but not in the way that 
I think messy. I think we messy. need to say messy. Our there you go. Are messy. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's true. That tangent that I didn't think we were going down today, but all right, here we are. Um, <laughs> so as far as sweets, food or drink, because, you know, there's things like hot chocolate that are delightful. Um, are sweets or food big parts of your stories? Um, or do you include food in all of your stories? I mean, obviously all characters have to eat, but some authors definitely make it a bigger part of their stories than others. So how does food and or sweets come into your stories? Um, well, for me in, in the love con, my, my last book, um, uh, the, uh, the main couple, they eat, uh, gummy worms, um, for stress relief as they're participating in this contest. Um, when they go to her parents for Sunday dinner, there's always this traditional dessert, like a Mississippi mud pie or sweet potato pies or something like that, with this big Southern style dinner. Um, then of course, uh, in the mornings, I consider Cam a cinnamon roll hero, so I deliberately had her bring him a, a coffee and a cinnamon roll for breakfast one time, uh, just you know because he's that kind of guy and he gets it. Um, but yeah, so for them, yeah, it's sweets and food and and the comfort that those bring are all you know a big part of of their story. So gummy worms for them is their go-to. That's fun. Uh, um... <laughs> I mean, you know, when you're stressed, you just snap the head off that sucker and you feel a little bit better. It's kind of like a, a candy voodoo doll, so to speak. Like aggressive sweets. <laughs> yes. It's funny. I, I, don't, I don't consciously add food a lot in my, my books. Um, I have a thing, and I think it carries over into the rest of my writing. I have a thing about food and sex it kind of grosses me out. Um, <laughs> so, you know, like if you, if you've got a scene where they've got whipped cream bed or chocolate sauce in bed, I'm going to just skim that because well, I can't deal. <laughs> the cleanup afterwards. Right. That's part of it. Oh, it's bad. sticky and sheet. Oh, blah. it's just not, I don't know. I can't, I can't bypass that mental hang up so I don't put a lot of food. I, I, I think, and then I said, I think the carries over the rest of my writing. I put a lot of food in my in my writing um but I, I mean maybe I do I just don't it's not a uh, prominent theme at any rate although you know for the the couple stories it did for Coastal Magic I that was a requirement so there's definitely food <laughs> in those stories <laughs> they'll do it if you have to right yeah right yeah I guess they do it if you have to yeah I mean they have to eat obviously and I have them go out like to eat and stuff but I don't do loving descriptions of you know whatever it is they're eating generally um I've read books like that and I mean like I'm like do you want to be a chef or writer I'm not really sure <laughs> yeah one of, one of uh coastal magic authors Jennifer Estep does food in her stories um one of the characters owns a, a barbecue joint and there's always a scene where there's just so much food and I get so hungry, <laughs> which is unfortunate because I don't eat meat anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, man, pulled pork sounds really good. <laughs> you know, I, I can't believe I didn't think about bringing this book because it's, it's not, maybe it's because it's not a romance, but there is, um, there's a series of books. Well, I mean, it's not the only series of books where um, there's recipes and it's a mystery, like a cozy mystery series with recipes in the book and the series is is fine but there's one recipe for cookies that I make like every Christmas and I have done for like 10 years <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and you know I'm just, and I'm just thinking of now like I, should, I don't even remember what the book's called um <laughs> <laughs> oh I think it was called the, the mean corpse mean Cor I, anyway um yeah you know, I, I like, I don't remember anything but the mystery, but man, these cookies are amazing. <laughs> Didn't know you were buying a cookbook when you got that one, huh? I, I did not, <laughs> but like, it's literally on the shelf of my cookbooks, like. <laughs> cookbook, 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 mystery. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if that's a go-to cookie recipe, I mean, you know, that actually is where it belongs then. That's funny. What kind of cookies um, are they? um they're 
like a chocolate oatmeal with um and then you they're half dipped in white chocolate like a dark chocolate oh oatmeal and, yeah with chocolate chips in it yeah so it's it's beautiful it's a beautiful cookie oh that sounds good I mean, if you want to, you know, share that, you know, send that on because my <laughs> husband loves oatmeal cookies. And of course, I love chocolate. And so that would be like a perfect blend. Of course, I can try to make it with the uh, keto chocolate instead. But that sounds great. Oh, can I eat oats? Probably not. Sounds good. I can make it for other people. I can make it for other people. That would be my gift of love because I would be mad serving these cookies to people that I can't eat. So that would prove that I love them. I love oatmeal cookies. Love them. I almost got some instead of my cookie cake for tonight. <laughs> but the cookie cake just looked so good. Um, and Jennifer says that that's what she hopes happens with the bits and bites anthologies is that people go back and use the recipes over and over. And um, apparently now everyone wants cookies and they need the recipe. <laughs> that's apparently happening in the comments so if you I've got, would i've got a lot of post uh, video work to do i guess <laughs> at least share the title of the book so we can make yeah. sure we get the right recipe look it up yeah yeah <laughs> um or you know make cookies and bring them in february that's fine too um what who said that it was it was me <laughs> i love cookies um so let's talk about your characters. Do any of them or would any of them have a favorite sweet that you can think of? Would they have a favorite sweet? Is that what yeah, you're if, oh. it's, if it's not in the book itself, like if it's not something that a reader would be like, oh yeah, I know that this character's favorite sweet is oatmeal cookies. What would they have as a favorite? That's a good question. <laughs> I have not thought of that. Um, what kind of sweets would they? Uh... Besides gummy worms. Anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah, that actually just came up in the comments. Right. Other than gummy worms. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think of what my, uh, my characters in my Shadow Chasers book would like. Because, uh, you know, one is like a 2,000 year old Nubian and the other is kind of, you know, doesn't like to touch people or things or things that are made by other people. So, um, you know, she probably would like candied almonds and he, let's just say, cause it's an anachronism. He'll, he likes fig Newtons. So we'll go with that. So I'll have to write that, I'm gonna have to write that down. So when I get to their next story, I can have them eating on that. I'm actually make notes for myself. We're helping, we're helping you plot. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I've got characters who are Canadian. I mean, not all my characters are Canadian, but a bunch of them are. Um, and there's there's two desserts, which of course, I, like I said, I didn't bring. I brought the chocolate bars um, that I can't get in the States, you know, unless I bake myself. So I'm pretty sure that those characters all will all love those. those. Um, one of them is called butter tarts, which is like a flaky pastry. And then the filling is it's almost like a pecan pie filling, but it's um, gooier and not as um, opaque. You know, it's it's like a cross between, I guess, maple syrup and a, and a pecan pie filling. Um, and uh, Nanaimo bars, which is sort of like a, a brownie base with um, coconut in it. And then there's sort of a custardy kind, kind of custardy kind of, buttercream combination uh, filling and then a chocolate top cut into bars. And so, yeah, I make, I make those because sometimes I just need to have, have a bit of home, you know? <laughs> wow. So and all of that sounds good. Oh, and Kate, okay, and if there's an attendee from Canada who's coming down, uh, we have a grocery list that we'd like <laughs> you to put in your trunk grocery or list. smuggle in your bag or something. We'll, we'll yeah. help you get through customs or whatever. You know, and, so, awesome. and as we're talking about this, I'm like, should I have a signing table or a bake sale table? I don't really know. <laughs> Both, because I, mean, I I'm going to show up, you know, for the cookie and come away with a book. Right. Why not both? Right. Yeah. 
this this dessert pairs with this series and this <laughs> dessert pairs with this series <laughs> just find find a way to make it match and it's fine oh, see casey and your your theme could be come for the cookie leave with the nookie i mean that's yeah. <laughs> it just it just works for itself that's, you know? that's a good day <laughs> I am signing up. This is delightful. <laughs> now I'm going to be disappointed if there's not like cookies or candy at your table. Just at least for make... the meet and greet part. Right. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if I can manage. <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh. The cat um, was just climbing on something in the closet and she fell <laughs> or knocked stuff over. I can't really tell what she was doing. But is, is she okay? Do we? Yeah, need, she's fine. Do we she's need just to a trouble take a break. No, she's just a troublemaker. Okay. <laughs> I have one of those as well. He's about eight months old and uh, he recently decided that he likes to drink out of the toilet now. Great. Great. Of course, Your I discovered cat? this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I normally don't associate, I do associate that with dogs because my puppy just did that. Uh, but cats, no, that's a new one for me. Mm -hmm. We discovered this after he came up and licked our faces. Mm -hmm. That sounds about right. That's mm -hmm. cat thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. <They're> jerks. <laughs> Correct. That is accurate. I love him. It's a good thing he's cute. Uh, <laughs> so is there a specific sweet treat that you're not a fan of that other people like? that maybe you're like, I don't understand. Are we eating the same thing? Okay, I have a couple. Um, one is the, the hotly debated candy corn. Um, I don't know why that exists, except to you know prove that Halloween is here. Uh, <laughs> and the other is the meringue and lemon meringue pie. I. I I, I eat the custard, I eat the lemon part, but I, I slice that part off. It's, there's, there's the mouthfeel of marshmallows and meringue. It just grosses me out so much. I just can't, I just slice that part off, which I know is really awful and totally destroys the point of having lemon meringue pie. But I guess I'll just eat lemon pie from now on instead of lemon meringue. But yeah, I can't do that part. Meringue, can meringue. Can totally. Totally agree. That's, yeah. I love meringue. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk to you anymore. What are we going to do for the next half hour? I'm so sorry. I, I don't eat moon pies for the same reason. So I know, I know I just lost some fans, I'm sure, but yeah, I can't do those. <laughs> well, I, I have some controversial opinions too. So. <laughs> oh, gosh. So oh, regret number, asking this question. You are, yeah. So number one, well, probably not as much as we are, but um, <laughs> we're going to regret answering, right? <laughs> um, number one for me, and this is this goes back to me being Canadian too, because um, we don't have red vines in Canada. And when I had them here, I thought they were going to be like Twizzlers. They're not like Twizzlers that I'm like, oh my God, what did I just put in my mouth? This is terrible. So no red vines. Mm -mm. And then a uh, I don't know if it's, I've got a thing about red food, but red velvet cake, I don't understand. Don't understand it. It feels like chocolate cake that's failing to be chocolate cake. And I, I just, I, but the thing is I love cream cheese icing. I'm like, why don't we have chocolate cake with cream cheese icing? Because that would be exceptional. I don't understand red velvet cake. I don't. That's a totally um, Southern thing, especially uh, black Southern things. Cause when I was growing up, if somebody brought a red velvet cake to whatever shindig we were having or cookout or whatever, they became special and got elevated. And there were like, you know, bake offs and who in the family had the best red velvet cake. Uh, I was very disappointed when I found out that it was just chocolate cake with whatever makes it red in it um, mm -hmm. but I agree with you it's all about the cream cheese icing frosting and if it's not where was I I was at I think it was at some kind of conference or something and they serve red velvet cake and the, the icing was not cream cheese that makes you want to throw it's it even worse I'm like what is that <laughs> yeah you're thinking you're going to have one kind of taste and it ends up being <laughs> something totally it wasn't even butter, butter cream it was just something that was white and just sugar <laughs> 
And, you know, it's like, it wasn't cream cheese or buttercream. It was something, some bastard child <laughs> of that category. And it was so disappointing because, you know, if I'm going to cheat on, on my diet with sugar, then I want the real thing and not this yeah. fake it's got, with whatever. Got to be worth the calories. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. Um, so I actually agree with you on both of those. Um, I actually don't like Twizzlers either, though. I don't like Twizzlers or Red Vines. Um, and Red Velvet Cake is not worth the calories. Um, but yeah, the cream cheese. And I don't like regular cream cheese, but I love cream cheese frosting. So I think it's because you add a lot of extra sugar to it. It makes it delightful. Makes that thing better. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're getting some comments that people agree with you on not liking candy corn. So you are not alone. <laughs> um, it's like flavored wax, honestly. What, what's the purpose? Oh, does anybody remember the wax lips? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or the what little thinking is soda children. bottles. The yes. little soda, wax soda bottles with like a liquid inside. We had a lot of waxes, kids. Right? We and you can still get them at Cracker Barrel. I, I, I. <laughs> but do you remember the little candy lipsticks? Those were so good. They weren't wax. They were hard candy. They were almost like oh. sweet tarts. I don't remember those. I do remember, I'm dating myself. I do remember the fake cigarettes that you can <laughs> Popeye, Popeye cigarettes. That's what we had. Popeye cigarettes. Yeah. Oh my God. We were so stupid as children, but <laughs> they were also gross. Like, I don't even understand. Right, right. <laughs> right. There was I... one brand that actually, like, when you first bit into it or you could blow through it and it would like poof smoke at the end. Yes. I only had those a couple of times. I mean, obviously, it wasn't real smoke, but. Right. They were grooming us to be smokers, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Started early. I, I bet those candies were made by the tobacco companies or some subsidiary. Right? No <laughs> doubt. You just started on it early. Right. So that, that kind of brings up another question. Is there a candy that you remember or a sweet as you remember from being a kid that's not sold anymore that you wish would come back? Mine is the candy lipsticks. I love them. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to date myself again. And uh, remember Chico sticks? I don't know if you remember those. Um, what were those? It, I don't even know how you, how to describe it, but it was like this long weenie, wiener looking thing, but it was this It's kind of orangey brown. I mean, to be honest, it looked like a turd, but it was. It's made and you make it sound so appealing. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. Um, it was like. <laughs> um butterfingers so, okay so it, it kind of has the same flavor as a butterfinger uh do they still make those i think they do so but it, it was called chico sticks or something like that i wish that somebody in the comments would kind of help me out bail me out uh if they remember those um but if not then i'll go with like um the lemon heads and the jolly ranchers but lemon heads especially you can only find those in like the big um big packs so or maybe at the movie theater they had the lemon heads the boston baked beans and the red hots all oh, those are made by the same company i think oh we got oh, a yeah. for the, the, the chico sticks okay thank you somebody <laughs> thank you for helping me out i appreciate it i don't they think do i can it. share the screen to show it but you can google it it's chick o stick Chick like a bird, chick or stick. And there's a lot of things that you can only get at a Cracker Barrel. Yeah, that right. I like. I'm like, that's the only thing it's good for. I mean, but no. Um, but for me, it's probably Big Red Gum. You know, I really like, I really like that. That and Fruit Stripe. With Fruit Stripe, you can sometimes find oh, wow. them occasionally. You know. Oh, I like those. Then, and then I'm going to say another gum because apparently gum was my thing as a kid. The was it freshen up? You know the one that had goo in the middle of it, like when you bit into it and it went had some sort of liquid inside. I think it was called freshen up. Anyway, I, remember, I think yeah. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, I think apparently I think was... that was a one and done for me because of the <laughs> getting the the glue the goo explosion. I think that was that was. That was I, I thought that was great. <laughs> I love the goo. 
<laughs> yeah, I didn't really like gushers because of the, the goo. You bite into it and it's liquid inside. Um, so what was your favorite flavor of Jolly Rancher? I'm curious. I went back and forth. So I would lay them out in a line and kind of like in groups of five. So there would be two of the same flavor on the outside, two of the same flavor in the, in the, in the inside and then one in the center. So we'll go um, apple, red, orange, red, apple. So whatever that red one was, the cherry or the watermelon one, that's kind of how I, that's, I would eat them in fives, which is again, why as an adult, I have to cut back on my sugar because I just <laughs> love all of the sweetness of that. So I would do the same thing with the lifesavers, just kind of lay them out in an in, in order that worked in my brain. And then I would eat them that way. So those, and then occasionally I would mistake the cinnamon one or spicy one for the watermelon flavor and get surprised. That's a very uh, different yeah. flavor profile there. Yep. Casey, did you have a favorite Jolly Rancher? I didn't like Jolly Ranchers, so I never really ate them. Yeah. I know. Probably, right. probably I'm now I'm leaving fans as we speak. I did not like Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> <laughs> I need somebody in the world to join me on the Lemon Jolly Rancher fan club because I loved the lemon jelly ranchers and they stopped making those so many years ago and I'm so sad so if you can find lemon jelly ranchers I will buy them this is an open invitation to anyone watching <laughs> please let me know because they're delightful and nobody else liked them so I always got all of them out of the bag I didn't have to share them with anybody so I can't complain. Um, let's see, we've missed a few comments. Oh, there's a question. For, if you're not a fan of the term sweet or clean for closed door romances, do you have another word that you prefer? So this is going back to one of our earlier questions about um, sweet and closed door romances. Oh gosh, Jennifer just sent me a link to Lemon Jelly Ranchers. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's got to be a market for something. So it's probably some back alley, black market, Jolly Rancher <laughs> <laughs> dealer out there who can hook you up. I'm <laughs> Go clicking and on it. Yeah. $22, $23 for a pack of 80. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's probably not unreasonable for yeah, something that you can't it sounds, anymore. Sounds all right. Yeah. Um, so do oh, you back have a, to the sweet and yeah. clean and yeah. chaste or whatever. Um, I don't know. That's It's been hotly debated for the last few years. Um, I think people are just kind of tired of the argument. Well, that maybe not, but uh, I don't know. I definitely, like Casey was saying, I definitely don't like clean because of the connotation that that means of, of everybody else's, you know, who doesn't fit into that category, clean category. Um, I mean, I guess you could say that they're sweet, but again, like we have already said, there are sweet scenes in, in a wide variety of romances. So um, I don't know. I don't know what you could call them instead. Uh, I know people have tried to do it by heat level. Yeah, that's what I say. I would probably go like low heat, you know, low heat, no heat, something like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know what else you would. I, I honestly, it hasn't been pertinent for me for marketing, so I haven't really given it a lot of thought. Because um, I think I've got only one. Well, aside from short stories, I think I've only got one book that's got closed door. So, I mean, I'm a big fan of just playing them like fade to black you know yeah. it just and and you know I mean, honestly, what's happening you just don't yeah. see it yeah yeah the only reason that I actually have this book that's fade to fade to black is because I was on a deadline and I was not going to make my deadlines <laughs> <laughs> absolutely makes sense I mean sometimes there's just not enough time for it yeah you gotta get ready and go <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Tigress just popped in and says hi to everyone. So, hi, Tigress. 
<laughs> Jennifer has sent me links to like all of these candies. So I've got a link to Chico Sticks. I've got a link to the Freshen Up Gum. I've got the Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, Thank Jennifer. You. In sarcasm. Right. Sarcasm font. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, all right. What, what else did I have that I wanted to discuss with you, lovely folks? Um, ooh, what is your favorite sweet snack for reading? Or I guess it doesn't have to be sweet. We can go salty, too. Okay, that's good, because I have a... My sweet tooth is small, but my salt tooth is huge. Um, so, and of course, since um, I've been on the keto diet, um, the I'll give the, the pork rinds, which, you know, we call them skins down here in, in Georgia, covered, soaked in hot sauce. Uh, and it's gotta be the Frank's uh, sauce because I put that stuff on everything. Um, so that that's kind of what I, cause I can be mindless with that, but also know that I'm not adding too many uh, I'm not adding any carbs and, um, you know, it's, a uh, it's kind of a mindless snack unless it gets too hot and my fingers get too covered and I can't tap my Kindle or, <laughs> or flip a page. Um, but I used to like kettle corn because it had that mm -hmm. sweet and salty, uh, especially kettle mm -hmm. corn that was sold at the Renaissance Festival. That's the only place that was worth getting the kettle corn from. So I really love that. Uh, and way back in the day, the Cracker Jack, love those can inhale a box of that very quickly. Um, I, I usually snack on dark chocolate, you know, like the, the lint or the Ghirardelli, the dark mm -hmm. ones. I like the orange ones, the orange or the hazelnut in them. Um, and then tea, like tea is really, is really my thing. Okay, um, hold up the cup again. Is that Marvin the Martian? It oh, sure is. Love it, <laughs> love it. We're all really showing our age tonight, guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a friend who teaches kindergarten, and uh, she says the kids don't know who Winnie the Pooh is in Tigger, and I'm like, this breaks my heart. <laughs> yeah, I've been feeling really old on the internet lately. <laughs> I know. I stick to my little corner just because, you know, oh, here come the olds, says the, <laughs> the youngins, <laughs> their eye roll emoji, which I guess is, is going out of style now. And some of the other emojis they say are identifies you as an old person. Well, yeah, I, I, I just got to be me and I'm not going to pretend that I'm a 20 something. That's right. That's right. I was informed that uh, using gifts marks you as old now. I can see that. I mean, they're kind of, there's so many better ways you can express things and gifts, but. I, I mean, I don't use them all that often, but. Yes. I don't oh, use any, I mean, I like to, I like full sentences and punctuation in my text. So that dates me too. <laughs> all right, we've got and, another question. Oh, go ahead, continue. Oh, I was gonna say, I also can't share memes that have spelling errors in them. I just can't. Do oh, it. yeah, drives me nuts. Even if they're funny, I just can't do it. <laughs> I can only do it if it's intentional. Like if it's intentionally misspelled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, that's funny. But yeah, if it's, I mean, if it's just like a typo misspelling, I'm okay with it, but yeah. Anyway, um, so what, is the sweetest scene you've ever written in any of your stories? See, you're stressing old folks' memories now. Right? <laughs> I, can't, I can't even barely remember my characters' names in books that I've written, Never mind. Right? Oh my gosh. Um. Yeah, that drunk blank, I'll tell you. Wow. If you yeah. were to ask me right now what's the sweetest scene I've ever read, I would immediately forget all titles of all books I've ever read. So oh, yeah. I 100% get it. <laughs> You'll think of it as soon as we get off of this. Right? Live 100%. Video, 
Yeah. yeah. I can think of maybe in the third Shadow Chasers book where Kafar offers to kill Kira if she goes too far into the shadow. I mean, that's kind of a, you know, sure, I'll make sure that I kill you so that nobody else does. And, you know, maybe that is sweet yeah. in that kind of universe. Um, but other than that, in my contemporaries, I guess the sweetest thing would be, you know, breakfast in bed or, you know, bring them a coffee after a hard night hard emotional night, you know, they're taking care of the other person, which, you know, it's kind of a universal thing. So maybe that's not, you know, something worth mentioning because everybody does it or whatever. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I can't think of anything over the books that I've written. So I'm sorry, people. I think that just goes back to the small moments that we were talking about yeah. at the beginning is those, those, you know, small gestures and those intimate, like, you only know that person so well that you know how they take their coffee or you know how they like their eggs or that kind of stuff. I think that's important. Um, oh, I do remember, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, go for it. But Laura, but there's a scene in um, The Love Con where uh, Kenya is having this argument with um, Cam's ex and he comes in and he makes her leave because he can see that she's like all flustered and stuff. And then he, after she leaves, he kind of lets the other people have it. So he's kind of right doing his white knight, you know, writing in um, whatever the knight in shiny armor scene uh, kind of thing is that he's defending his woman kind of a thing. So, you know, that always stuff like that just makes you your ovaries happy dance, uh, except I don't have those anymore. So. <laughs> I guess other parts do a happy dance but yeah something like that even though maybe in real life I'd be like I can handle my own stuff you know tell my husband that but you know if, if there's something that he does like that that you know makes my feminine parts just eh, then I guess that would be kind of a like a sweet scene I guess and of course anybody could do that feminine parts are non- it's definitely uh, depends on your the, person yeah yeah for sure um so another question from the audience what book have you loved recently that had sweet moments in it they need reps <laughs> so recently or not so recently also yeah, supposed to be prepared for that wasn't i um <laughs> We're talking about sweets. I should have should have known something like that was going to come up. Yeah, I, I made notes. Because <laughs> I'm like I'm like that. Um, so uh, let's see. Well, that's totally not right. Um, <laughs> and then the notes are wrong. So good, good, good job. Um, so two go to sweet books for me. Um, Frog by Mary Kame and Clearwater by Amy Lane. Um, Amy Lane, you have to be careful because sometimes she's got super angst. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think super, super duper angst is necessarily sweet. It can be really, really hard to read, but um, Clearwater is definitely sweet, and I, I really like that one. Um, recently read something called Dead Serious by Vaughn Cassidy. I enjoyed that one. I thought that was pretty sweet too. Um, most holiday books are gonna be sweet, right? Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think that was, that's pretty much what, what's on my list here. I could probably say more, but you know, I can only take up all the time. I don't wanna take up all the time. When... <laughs> I also read a lot of Regencies and they tend to be sweet too, actually, I think. Yeah, for me, I, unfortunately, I, most of my reading time has been taken up by K-dramas and C-dramas. So uh, most of those tend towards the, uh, the sweet end of the spectrum. Um, but uh, one of my friend's books that I've just recently uh, started reading because my everybody's to be read pile is so huge, even electronically, digitally, um, Sweet Tea by uh, Piper Hughley. Um, most of her books are would, I guess, fit under the sweet or clean umbrella but this one I really like it's a contemporary she usually does these um, historical ones so uh, it's set in the um, 
it's set in this small town that she's written about in her historicals. And so um, it's her first contemporary. So I've read that because I was just super curious of how uh, her contemporary voice is. And I just really have liked the book so far. So, and it's, it's um, watching the interaction with uh, the main character and her grandmother and with this guy that uh, the heroine thinks is kind of like, um, like trying to steal her grandmother's recipes and stuff. So watching that interplay for them, I can see it kind of folding, unfolding like a Hallmark movie. And it's just really great. Um, all it needs is to be said at Christmas time and it would just be like absolutely perfect then. Because of course she's a lawyer in big city, comes home to, to the small town because her grandmother, she thinks her grandmother's in trouble, you know, all of that. So it's just, it's just really great. We have a rare, whoa, whoa. echoing. <laughs> uh, we have a request for a title for a sweet K drama. Oh dear. Um, do you like uh, contemporary or do you like historicals? Because I'm really deep into the historical dramas. Um, as far as the costume dramas, um, Fairy and Devil, Fairy and Devil. That one is just that one just tore me up all the way through it. Um, just watching the sacrifices that the hero was making for, for the woman he at first hated and then just started to love. And you can see this, this transformation of him from being the bad guy to being this good guy making this, these sacrifices. Um, just really loved that one and, and contemporary. Uh, oh, what was the one I just finished? What's the one he just finished? Oh. I'm going to think of it as soon as we get off of here. I am so sorry. I can't think of any right now. I should like keep a log of them the way that uh, people keep, the way that readers keep <laughs> their book log. I'm going to have to start doing that because I can't think of what the name of it is. And it was just so sweet and, and light on the angst, but still got your heart twisted in knots. And I just loved it. Um, I try not to cry at the end of them. Uh, I can't think of it. I'm so sorry. I am terrible. I at remembering titles of things that I've seen or read or watched. So you're in good company. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you think of it, come back to the video and add it to the comments so that way we can check it out. Um, so I think we're starting to run low on time. Real quick, what is something that somebody sweet what is something someone's done for you that's sweet? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Well, for me, I guess you could say it's, it's my husband kicking me out of my office for me to go and get some sleep instead of staying up uh, way too late on a deadline, which happens far too often, being on a deadline. I mean, so I guess that you can consider that sweet or, you know, depending on how bad the writing is going, it can be, you know, he's on the verge of death. So one of the two. Uh, for uh, me, it's also my husband. Uh, <laughs> uh, early, in the early days of uh, when I was submitting books and getting rejections, um, he always, he always had ice cream for me with further rejections, so. <laughs> That is sweet. I love that. <laughs> all right. So we're going to wrap up. Um, first of all, thank you both for hanging out with me and talking sweets and letting me have an excuse to get cookie cake, <laughs> um, which I will be eating on for the next couple of days for sure, because it's too much all at once. Um, so can you give us a little wrap up? What's coming next for you? Do you have anything coming out between now and Coastal Magic and where people can find you online? Okay, I'll go, Casey, if you want. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm redoing my website. Um, so don't go to sericiaglass.com because somebody, uh, GoDaddy sold that to somebody and it goes to a gambling site now. So um, I will be getting sericia.com back up and running and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. Um, at Sericia on Facebook and um, Twitter and at Sericia Glass on Instagram. Um, and then the next thing that's coming up, hopefully before Coastal Magic will be Shadow Blight, which is a paranormal romance set in the Shadow Chasers universe. And I'm 
it's already written. I'm just trying to expand it to a decent uh, amount. There's a bunch of content that I had to cut to fit in an anthology. So I want to do like a 40 to 50,000 word rewrite, revision on that. So hopefully before Coast of Magic. Um, I also hope to have a book for Coastal Magic, West on Granger, I know I said that. I am going to get it out for Coastal Magic. That's my, that's my sending that out to the universe. Um, and um, I have a website at caseyburn.com. It's a little out of date because I that's what I do for the day job and I hate working on my own website. So, <laughs> um, but it's there, it's mostly, I mean, the books are up to date, but nothing else is. Um, and uh, I'm at, mostly on Facebook at author Casey Byrne. Um, when I say mostly on Facebook, that's not still not very often, but um, I'm also on Twitter, but I don't really go there much. And um, also on Instagram, also don't go there much because I'm terrible at social media. So, but I will res respond to, you know, <laughs> If, if someone asks me something directly, you know, I, I respond to it, but yeah, not great at it. Excellent. Well, again, thank you both for chatting with us. Um, everybody watching, please come hang out with us at Coastal Magic. We have a really good time. Daytona in February is perfect weather. There's a reason I live in Florida. It's basically for November through March. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, again, thanks everybody for watching and watching us talk about sweets, both in romance and in food, and we'll see you all on the beach in February. Bye. Yay. Bye.